Light in all its forms is employed to analyze matter. So we can learn things about matter using all of the various wavelengths of light. Some wavelengths are better for learning some things and other wavelengths are better for learning other things, but all forms of light have been employed by scientists in order to learn things about the universe. We know intuitively something about the concentration of a solution just by its visual appearance. We can tell that the solution on the left is concentrated compared to the solution on the right. In other words, the solution on the left absorbs more light that's incident on it, and the solution on the left absorbs less light. Now, another way to say this is that the solution on the right transmits more light, and the solution on the left transmits less light. In other words, concentrated solutions have a higher absorbance and dilute so solutions have a lower absorbance. When light of a specific wavelength is directed at a colored solution, some of the photons are absorbed and some are transmitted. So on the left we have a light source and in the middle we have our solution that is contained in what's called a cuvette. Now it's very important when you're using a cuvette that you don't touch the outer surfaces so as to get oils from your skin on the cuvette. Sometimes a cuvette um, has more of a, a cylindrical shape, kind of like a test tube, but this one here obviously um, is more rectangular prism-ish. In any case, on the left we have a source of light that we can set to a specific wavelength. And on the other side of the sample we have a detector of light. So what happens is our light source emits a certain intensity of light and our machine knows this intensity. And what goes through the solution is what we call the transmitted light. And of course the intensity of the transmitted light is less than that of the emitted light. And the more concentrated the solution is, the less light is transmitted. So the difference between, right, when we compare the emitted intensity with the transmitted intensity, we can determine the absorbance of this particular solution. So if we have solutions of different concentration, we can of course get, we will get a different absorbance for each of those solutions. Using a spectrophotometer to determine an unknown solution concentration. So here are some steps for doing this. First, we need to learn how to use a spectrophotometer. And here's a diagram of the essential parts of a spectrophotometer. Uh, you see that we have a sample holder. That's where we put the cuvettes that have no finger smudges, incidentally. Over on the right, we uh, note the wavelength control. So we set this to specific wavelengths, and that wavelength will be read out on the screen. In this case, uh, you can see we have set this to a wavelength of, say, 550 nanometers. And once we put our cuvette in, we will read a particular absorbance. Again, based on the difference between the emitted light and the transmitted light. The second step is that we need to use a solution of our analyte of known concentration. And we're going to choose various wavelengths on our spectrophotometer. We're going to record the absorbance for each of those known samples of our analyte and we're going to make an absorbance versus wavelength graph. And it might look something like this. You can see that we've chosen various wavelengths. Uh, you've got the data points here that have particular wavelengths that are associated with them and from our spectrophotometer we've read off the absorbance at each of those wavelengths. Sometimes 
we'll use several analyte solutions of known concentration. And in that case, we might graph all of them. And in each case, we can see that we tend to get a peak at a particular wavelength. So the third step is, from the graph, whether it's like uh, at the top or like at the bottom, in other words, whether we've done just one solution of known concentration or several and have varied the wavelength, we choose the wavelength for which the absorbance is maximized. And in the top graph, that would be about um, 510 nanometers, maybe a little bit less. In the bottom graph, it would be something around 540 nanometers. The next step is using several known solutions of your analyte and your chosen wavelength from the graph on the previous slide. Record the absorbance reading for each solution and make a graph of absorbance versus concentration. So what we have here is uh, a note as to what the analyte is that we are analyzing. We've also made a note as to what wavelength um, of light we are using. And then we have concentration at the bottom versus absorbance. Now we know all of these concentrations zero concentration of course is going to have an absorbance of zero. We've made up a 0.1 molar solution of this analyte cobalt 2 nitrate and we've recorded an absorbance of about 0.2. We've made a 0.2 molar solution, a 0.3 molar, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and we've put them through the spectral photometer and we've read the absorbance values, recorded those, and then we've made a graph. Finally, place a cuvette with your unknown solution into the spectral photometer, record the absorbance, and go to your absorbance versus concentration graph to determine your unknown concentration. So now we take our unknown concentration solution of cobalt 2 nitrate, we put that in the cuvette, we run it through the spectral photometer, and the spectral photometer gives us an absorbance value. Let's say it's right here where this black dot is, 0.5. That means that the concentration of our unknown solution is going to be somewhere around 0.25.